Here's a bombshell for you folks, straight from the heart of royal drama. Tom Bauer, a renowned royal expert, has cast a verdict that's going to leave everyone gasping. Harry and Meghan, our favorite expat royals, have crossed a bridge too far and, according to Bauer, there's just no way they can make a U-turn now. But let's dive into the juicy details of this high-stakes royal saga. Good day, my fellow royal enthusiasts. You'd hear on the Royal Family News Channel, a popular source of regal gossip. Our rebellious royals, Harry and Meghan, have reportedly had a bit of a tete-a-tete -tete with King Charles's office, mulling over whether to pay a visit to the kingdom they once called home. But Bauer, an authority on royal affairs and the man behind the best-selling book, Revenge, Meghan, Harry, and the War Between the Windsors, had a dim view of the situation. In his no-holds-barred manner, Bauer declared that the royal couple's strained ties with their family have reached a point of no return. Harry, he argued, has been acting selfishly and unwisely, apparently not grasping that his actions have made family reconciliation an impossibility. He goes further, underscoring how Harry and Meghan's relationship with King Charles and Prince William has been severely scarred. Harry, in Bauer's view, seems more interested in monetizing his life through interviews rather than mending the damaged family bonds. What led to this impassable rift, you might ask? Bauer pointed out that the nail in the coffin was Harry's hostile and vitriolic words during a recent memoir release. As he sees it, Harry's blind to the pain he's causing because he's overly absorbed in his own narrative. Even during the revealing interviews, like the recent one where Meghan spilled the beans on her upbringing in a broken home, the underlying message seemed to be that reconciliation is a ship that has sailed. As Bauer put it, Harry, a man who might not be the sharpest tool in the shed, is so engrossed in his Californian life and his own confusions that he doesn't truly grasp the harm he's inflicted. That's the real tragedy of it all. Despite the love Harry evidently has for his life in sunny California, he appears oblivious to the hurt he's left behind. Bauer was shocked at Harry's lack of foresight and the blindness to the consequences of his actions. He mused, Harry might not even want to come back because he's convinced he's hit the jackpot. He's infatuated with this glamorous lifestyle, the publicity, the heaps of money he's raking in. And as for Meghan, well, she wouldn't even entertain the idea of a return to the UK. Now let's change gears a bit and talk about the couple's life under the golden Californian sun. I mean, it's not hard to imagine why they'd love it there, right? However, with all that said and done, there's a question hanging in the air. Would Harry and Meghan be attending the coronation at Westminster? It seems even they haven't made up their minds about that. A spokesperson for the couple recently stated that they were still undecided about the coronation, which is scheduled to happen after their son, Archie's fourth birthday. This comes shortly after news broke that the king asked Meghan and Harry to hand over the keys to Frogmore Cottage to Princess Eugenie and her husband, Jack Brooksbank. Now, the plot thickens. Thomas has chimed in, arguing that Harry and Meghan's attendance at the coronation might turn into a distracting spectacle. Their presence could take away from the king's big moment, he reasoned, expressing concern that the day's focus would shift from the king's crowning to the controversial couple. He went on to suggest that it might be best if they abstained from the event altogether, given their rather tempestuous departure from the royal life. It's not in their best interest, and it certainly won't help the occasion, Thomas argued, pressing on the point that the focus should remain on King Charles during what is undoubtedly the most important day of his life. Thomas also pointed out that the final call about their invitation might be left until the last minute to gauge if the couple would indeed be comfortable with attending or not. But in the end, he insisted, Charles must stand his ground. His coronation should not be overshadowed by Harry's possible antics. Why invite trouble? While all this was unfolding, rumors were circulating that the king might strip Harry and Meghan's children, Archie and Lily, of their princely titles. However, the couple put these rumors to rest when they referred to their daughter as Princess Lily in a statement announcing her christening, which took place on March 3rd in California. The following day, the titles of Prince and Princess were officially added to Archie and Lilibet's names on the family's official website. 
Tom, however, insists that the children's titles could still be under threat. The titles are all that Harry has left, and his children have been bestowed with them. It's a crucial point in this saga, he opined, hinting at the potential loss of these titles as a major blow. Rounding off this royal roller coaster, we're reminded that Harry and Meghan have been in an ongoing tussle with the royal family ever since their departure for the US in January 2020. This, coupled with their business ventures, adds another layer to this complex narrative. As we dive deeper into the pool of royal intrigue, we find that the couple's strained relationship with the royals has been thrust further into the spotlight. The sparks started flying after Harry and Meghan aired out some dirty royal laundry during a heart-to-heart -heart with none other than the queen of television, Oprah Winfrey, and on their Netflix docuseries as well. Then came January, and with it, Harry's explosive memoir. Remember the part where he claimed that his brother, Prince William, ran him over during a heated argument over a game of tag? And the casualty of their skirmish, an innocent dog bowl, was shattered at the scene. But it wasn't just William in Harry's crosshairs. Queen Consort Camilla also found herself a target when Harry accused her of leaking negative stories about him and William. The alleged motive? She was supposedly trying to swing media attention in her favor. The memoir also delved into intimate conversations between Harry, his father, and William. These discussions took place in the serene setting of Frogmore Cottage's garden, just hours after the funeral of his grandfather, the Duke of Edinburgh. Now, let's switch gears and delve into Harry's personal experiences and revelations. In a recent live-streamed interview with a trauma expert, Harry opened up about the emotional scars he bears from his upbringing. He confessed to feeling like an outsider in his own family and identified with his mother's similar experience. He lamented over a childhood marked by an aching need for attention and a profound sense of despair. His method of coping, drugs, as Harry admitted during the pound 19 per ticket online event. These substances, he said, provided him with a much needed escape from his problems. He detailed his experiences with cocaine, saying it was more of a social activity that gave him a sense of belonging. Marijuana, on the other hand, truly helped him, as per his own words. But Harry's revelations didn't stop at his personal drug use. The interview, painted as an intimate discussion about childhood loss and trauma, took an unexpected turn when he candidly talked about his experiences with psychedelic substances. He further surprised the audience by revealing that he'd encouraged other members of his family to pursue therapy. Harry's viewpoint on family dynamics was clear as day. Families can be complicated, and indeed, many are dysfunctional. Diving back into the depths of this royal saga, Harry gave further insight into his therapeutic journey. He confessed that therapy has introduced him to a new language of self-understanding, a language he feels is not shared by his family members. He further explained, I opened up to my therapist and said, I have a problem. This therapy works for me. Now I can live a truly authentic life, experience genuine happiness, and be a better father to my children. Yet as he ventured down this path of self-discovery, he felt a widening gap between him and his royal family. After the loss of his mother, he was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. His childhood was a blend of joyful moments and painful experiences, he said. Now, he and Megan are committed to ensuring that they don't inadvertently pass any of their own trauma onto their children. Interestingly, Harry hinted at a deeper connection with his late mother than with his older brother, William. Ever since I was young, I've always felt a bit different from the rest of my family, he admitted. He likened his experiences to being in a container. Sometimes his body was in, but his mind was out, and other times it was the opposite. Harry also acknowledged his struggle to be his authentic self amidst his royal surroundings. Any attempts to express his true self, be it through media interactions or family encounters, felt like straying away from what was expected of him. He felt increasingly distanced from his loved ones, a problem he was aware of but still grappling with. Tom Bauer speculates that the King would not appreciate Harry's ongoing series of tell-all interviews. I'm pretty sure he's heard these allegations before, Tom commented, adding that life had always revolved around Charles and Harry's actions could disrupt that balance. If Harry and Meghan were to attend the coronation, he feared it might exacerbate the situation. 
However, Harry remained non-committal about his presence at the coronation. He subtly suggested that the door was still open and left the decision in the royal court's hands, so to speak. The ball is in their court, he said, leaving us all waiting for the next serve in this riveting royal match.